going. Today I'm working on a grab and go cooler. We're at 65 Fahrenheit, so let's do our checks. Compressor running. Condenser fans. They are also running. Sight glass. Flashing. Let's go over to our evaporator coil. All three fans are running. No ice on the coil. And let's just go check our TXV super quickly. And a little bit of ice on that TXV. So let's go ahead and gauge up. And our pressures are in and around six and let's call it six and 170, six and 170. All right, first things first, let's go figure out what our suction pressure should be. So this one's a little bit different than the ones we've been working on. It's a TXV reach in, okay? So how we're gonna figure that out is we're gonna take our current box temp and we're gonna subtract our TD. So in the past with our cap tube, we were using desired box temp. Because we have a TXV, we're gonna use current box temp. So our current box temp was 65 Fahrenheit and our evap td it's a 20 td coil because it is a reach in so we're going to subtract 20 fahrenheit and that's going to give us 45 fahrenheit all right so let's come over to our pt chart 45 fahrenheit would give us 95 psi and for our head pressure we simply take our ambient and we add 30 Fahrenheit. So 86 Fahrenheit is our ambient. And we're just going to add 30. And that gives us 116 Fahrenheit. So if we go back over to our PT chart. 116 Fahrenheit gives us 293. So we're looking for 95 and 293. All right, so we're looking for 95 and we're getting six PSI and 170 PSI. So that means we have low suction and low head. So based on low suction or low head, it means we have a low charge or a restriction. Okay, so generally I would add refrigerant at this point. This thing takes a lot of refrigerant, okay? Um, I would have to add about three pounds. I do not want to get into that. I'm just going to jump into the leak test, okay? So on a cap tube system with like eight ounces, I don't care. I'll dump in whatever is remaining of the charge to rule out a restriction. In this case, I don't want to dump in three pounds um, in case we do have a leak. So we're going to do things a little bit backwards here just because we're working on bigger equipment. But a little trick here is we're going to equalize the system. It's equalizing at 80. That's telling me we're probably low. I should be above 100 on a system of this size. Okay, so let's just jump into the leak test. We're going to hit the fast forward here. And quickly do the condensing unit. So like I said before, I usually like to add the charge at this point. But I'm looking at about 3 pounds. That's getting pretty expensive with the price of 404. So... I like to use that equalizing test uh, that the pressure should have been a lot higher. Now I'm not ruling out a restriction, but we are going to hunt for a leak first just so we can try to save the customer some money. Uh, in the long run we may um, waste a lot of time, but let's just see. So spoiler alert, I'm having a struggle finding this leak. I'm really having a hard time. I went over this coil here with the DTEC and the H10, so now I'm going a lot slower. It's in fast forward mode. But I'm really struggling to find this leak. Um, it was kind of making me question whether we had a restriction or not. But eventually, we got a hit. Somewhere here in this section of the coil, we're getting a hit. It's a very small leak. Okay. So we'll hit fast forward one more time. if we can pinpoint it um, having some struggles so I'm gonna go into the manual kind of mode and I find this is really good for pinpointing small leaks uh, the auto was picking something up and here we go bang all right 
We definitely have a leak here somewhere in this row. And there it is. It's right there in that section. Perfect. All right, so I'm just going to go back with the DTAC. This is a very expensive coil. I want to make sure there's a leak and the DTAC's getting the hit to you. The soap is not going to find this leak, unfortunately. Um, so let's just go ahead. I don't know if I'm going to be able to repair this. And yeah, we have another leak on the u bends it looks like. So I'm going to go into this pinpoint mode. The DTAC 3 is really good for this kind of stuff. I find sometimes the other mode will give you false readings. And a definite hit. 100% it's the second u-bend on that middle row okay and let's just kind of try to get a better, better shot there so the second section the middle one right there um, I did spray soap and bubbles I could not find the leak so it was not on the u-bend all right so we did end up changing the coil you can see we're at 52 and 295 box F is 34 uh, sight glass is clear and that's actually the coil temp, so let's go check the actual temp. It's 36 Fahrenheit. All right, so let's go see if our pressures are correct. Just because the sight glass is clear doesn't mean um, things are correct. We could have low suction. We could be frosting up this coil. So we ended up with 36 Fahrenheit. Okay, and to find out what our pressures need to be, we subtract our EVAP TD. So that gives us 16 Fahrenheit. And 16 Fahrenheit gives us about 50 PSI. And we had 52 PSI, so we're off by 2 PSI. I'm not too concerned about this. This is an open case. It's like a grab and go. So we're within the range, okay? Uh, 50.2, 52. Now my digital gauge there, that Atkins probe, it may have been reading higher or lower. Like maybe it was 35.7 or 36.3. So we're off by 2 PSI. We can live with that. Now for our head pressure, once again, it's ambient. Plus our split, which in this case is 30 Fahrenheit, so it's 86 Fahrenheit, and then we add in our condenser split, which gives us 116 Fahrenheit, and that puts us at 295 PSI, and we ended up having exactly 295 PSI, so pressures are adding up correctly, uh, the unit's cooling very quickly. Uh, so we are all good on this one.